What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about a release from a little earlier this month, Titan. Before we begin, let me know in the comments what your thoughts on this movie were, if you already saw it, or if you were planning on seeing it, and make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you like these reviews, as it helps me out immensely by getting my content out there. And if you're new here, I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with reviews of new releases, older films, hidden gems, and so much more on a near daily basis. But let's jump right into it and let's talk about Titan. This stars Agatha Rossell in her feature film debut as Alexia, a woman who, after being injured in a car accident as a child, has a titanium plate fitted into her head. And that's all I'm going to say, as it's better to know absolutely nothing about this going in. To even just know the basic plot beyond that one sentence is honestly more than enough. I walked into this knowing only one thing, and even then, I wish I wasn't aware of that. But this is directed by Julia Dussarnau, and I apologize if I mispronounced that, and her first film was Raw, a film that I thoroughly enjoyed, and it's one that managed to strike a fine balance between making you feel uncomfortable, yet still telling a compelling story, never trying to be shocking for the sake of it. And here, she manages to take that notion and crank things up a notch, and in my opinion, she totally outdoes herself here. This is the definition of an experience. Now I've said that about a few films this year, Malignant was one of them, the underrated Nowhere Ends another, but they've got nothing on Titan. Now I'm going to do my best to tiptoe around the plot while still giving some relevant information, but the interesting thing about this film is it manages to tell an incredibly weird story that won't always make the most sense, yet oddly enough, it's one that surprisingly has a lot more heart than it lets on. Though to be clear, it puts you through a lot to make that feel earned, at least to a degree. Because Alexia is not a sympathetic character when we first meet her. In fact, it's questionable if she truly does become sympathetic. Because she can be outright horrible when we first meet her. She has a few interactions where at first she reacts the way she does because she's specifically provoked. And you can understand why she reacts the way she does. But then she continues to do certain things to people who don't really do anything wrong to her. And when it clicks with you early on what kind of a person she truly is, you will feel a little put off, and understandably so. I've said before more times than I can count that sympathetic characters are a must when it comes to making a good movie, but that's not quite what we get here, at least not with Alexia. The only other major plot detail I'll give is that there's one other main character, and it's a man named Vincent, played by Vincent Lindon. He's a very complicated person. He's someone who seems like he can handle stress well, and he has the respect of those he works with, though we see he has some demons of his own that he tries to handle privately, sometimes without much luck. And I feel his arc is what ultimately becomes the heart and soul of this film, and it makes up for just how awful Alexia can be. Though I felt both performances from Agatha Roussel and Vincent Lindon were nothing short of fantastic. I'm aware Lindon's been around for quite some time, though this is the first time I'm seeing him in anything, but I felt he crushed it here. And the same goes for Roussel. As I mentioned earlier, this is actually her first feature film, and all I can say is, what a debut. I mean, she is absolutely commanding here. And even though Alexia is someone who we don't wind up rooting for, Roussel's performance is absolutely captivating, as each situation that's presented requires something completely different from her. And the way she gracefully weaves in and out of a number of complicated moments is entrancing, even if we're not on her side. And I think what helps make up for the fact that we're following around such a horrible person is that the specific details of our arc are without a doubt some of the most bizarre I've seen in a movie all year. Even if I were to say it, it's still one of those things that you have to see to believe, and even then, I had a hard time believing it myself. So I felt myself having to know how exactly this would play out, how it would escalate, where it would go, and it manages to totally keep you engaged the entire time. The way it starts off is one of the weirdest moments I've seen in a movie all year, yet it manages to outdo itself from there. I gotta say, I really gotta hand it to Duzar now for what she does here. Especially because she does a wonderful job of making something that could have easily come off as gimmicky or schlocky come off as oddly compelling. Like, despite the weird circumstances in which some of these characters meet and the way that their respective storylines progress, even though there are still a lot of morally dubious plot points that come up, there are these really nice emotional beats that she hits that totally caught me off guard. I wouldn't say it fully redeems certain things that these characters do 
knew from earlier on, mainly Alexia, but because of how strong certain interactions later in the film are, I did find myself almost forgetting that I essentially hated one of these characters at the beginning, so I really gotta commend the stellar writing and top-notch performances for really helping me get that wrapped up in where this goes. And it's also worth noting that this does contain some bits of dark comedy sprinkled in there. Not too many moments, like I wouldn't call this a dramedy or anything, but as I've said, this movie has an incredibly odd premise and it only gets weirder from its first few scenes. And I've seen movies get weird and totally play it straight face the entire time and you can buy it, but I wouldn't say that's the case here. It fully embraces its weirdness and there were several moments where I think the intention was to get a laugh out of us. And for me, they worked. They didn't come off as totally jarring or anything. They came in at just the right moment and they wouldn't overstay their welcome. And because of the great work done at keeping us interested in just about every movie characters made, it helped make these moments feel welcome. But to be clear, this is not a comedy or a dark comedy. It's technically classified as a horror movie, and I'd agree there. Though it's not a particularly scary film, it's more body horror in the vein of a David Cronenberg movie or last year's Swallow. It could be more disturbing than anything, with the titanium plate fitted into Alexia's head, igniting a number of the weird interactions without getting into any specific details. We'll get close-ups of certain things, character's experience, or several things happen just out of frame, though it'll be made clear what it is that's happening, and and it makes a squirm of it. Though like Raw, I never found this to cross the line just for the sake of it, though that's certainly going to come down to personal preference, at least I feel, because sometimes even the implication of something uncomfortable happening is enough for some people, but I wouldn't call this tasteless, and each moment does play into the bigger picture, at least for the most part. And because of how well I found all these moments to come together, I absolutely love this film. I can see people being really turned off by its odd sensibilities and feeling either indifferent towards it or outright hating it, and I totally get why. But like I said, the way it takes such a weird premise and finds a way to spin it to have this real human emotion at the same time is nothing short of awe-inspiring if you ask me. And it definitely establishes Du Sarnau as one of the most original filmmakers out there and someone we need to be on the lookout for in the years to come. There's this ongoing sentiment from audiences that the only things out there are sequels, reboots, remakes, and adaptations. Well, if you feel that way, you should check this one out. Even if you don't wind up liking it, this should quickly silence any of those sentiments. Because here we get something that, like I said, is something you have to see to believe. It's a very ambitious film, despite not being on as grand of a scale as I thought it would be. And I'd even call it provocative, and that's something I almost never say to describe any movie. The only criticism I really had for it, beyond an unlikable lead character, is that Due to some of the weirder circumstances, I was looking for some sort of logic, I guess. Certain things happen, and it's never truly explained how certain plot points are even possible, but Do So Now kind of just asks you to simply go with it and trust her. And like I said, I thoroughly enjoyed the movie overall, so I did trust her, but I found myself curious, though not thrown off, how certain things were possible. The film never seemed interested in truly explaining how certain things are done. So it's something you'll have to accept early on so you'll be able to be on board with this. Though, I still couldn't get that out of the back of my head. But I know this movie's just not going to be for everyone. Though, then again, when is a movie truly for everyone? And I know there will be those that liked it, but won't love it, simply because a few things weren't explained properly. And while I was totally forgiving of that, I can totally sympathize with them there. Titan is an experience, and I don't say that lightly. It has one of the most unique premises I've seen in the movie all year, and it's one that I implore you, if you are going to check it out, don't look up anything about it going in. It's bizarre, darkly funny, has two fantastic performances, manages to mix human emotions with the surreal, and it establishes Julia Dussanel as a director you need to keep an eye out for in the years to come. I understand why everyone may not love this, but for me, this was one of the year's best films. Titan gets a 9 out of 10. So let me know, did you see Titan, or are you planning to see it, and what were your thoughts? Did you like this more than Raw? Was it one of the weirdest movies you've seen this year? Let me know in the comments below so we can discuss. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it, and for more movie reviews and film discussion, please make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated. Thanks for watching everyone, and keep having fun with film.